And by suggesting that God would want them to sacrifice their children, what the Israelites are doing is comparing God to Moloch. And I, I even wrote in my notes here, it makes you want to slap an ancient Israelite. <laughs> it's terrible. And all of this amounts to a poorly expressed complaint against God. And it's as though the Israelites are saying to God, what more do you want from us, God? We're giving you our calves, and we're ordering up rams, and we're giving you oil, and we'll even think about giving you our kids. What more do you want from us? And as terrible as that sounds from them, my guess is that each and every one of us can relate to that. At least one time in our lives, we've been there. We felt like we were the ones doing all the giving. We were the ones doing all the performing. We were the ones handing everything over. And there was just God being demanding, wanting something else from us. And you know, it's in some ways laudable that we might be willing to give such costly things along with the Israelites. But what we need to understand is that there's a glaring omission in the list that the Israelites offer, in the list that we often give to God of all the things that we give. And the prophet Micah points it out in verse 8. He says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. You see, we're willing to give your old calves, but we're not willing to give our hearts. We're willing to line up thousands of rams and dig out 10,000 gallons of olive oil, but we're not going to give ourselves. And we might even consider giving our children, but God, don't ask us to give you our will or to be obedient. Because we're not going to do that. You see, as costly as these things are, whether materially or emotionally, all of them are external. But God wants our hearts. God wants our hearts. Because it's through our hearts that our character is shaped. And it's through our hearts that our actions are determined. When God talks about giving ourselves to him, he mentions two different things. First, he talks about acting justly and loving mercy. And when he's saying those things to us, he's talking to us about demonstrating responsibility for those around us and caring for them faithfully. Demonstrating responsibility for the people who are around us and caring for them faithfully. In other words, God is saying to us that he wants us to treat others in the same way that he treats us. And then, when he tells us that we should walk humbly with him, he's saying that we should be putting his will before our own. In other words, God says he wants us to interact with him based on who he is, God. He is God. We are not. And he is good and faithful. He's been faithful to us beyond measure. And that God has done incredible things for us. So, what does it mean for us to be truly thankful? Well, I'm, I'm not really sure that a day or a tradition really measure up, do they? 
Not that they're bad. Not that there's anything wrong with setting aside a day to be thankful or setting up a tradition that helps us to be thankful. But if that's all there is, then we've missed the point. Thankfulness is about us humbling ourselves before God and recognizing who He is and what He's done. And it's about treating others around us in the way that God has treated us faithfully, justly, mercifully. In other words, thankfulness is about us acknowledging God for who He is and then treating others the way He treats us. It's something that's lived out on an everyday basis. Imagine how our community might react if we are truly thankful. Pray with me. Father, this entire morning, we have come before you humbly, recognizing you not only for all that it is that you've done for us, but for who you are, that you are God, and that we are not. And Lord, this whole business of being thankful is a much bigger deal than we sometimes give it. Sometimes we're okay with just setting aside a single day. Sometimes we're okay with just saying a few words, but God, it's more than that. It's about a lifestyle. So Father, would you help us? Help us to be thankful. Help us to walk humbly before you, to submit our will to your will. And God, help us to love others around us in the same way that you have loved us. God, it's so easy for us to fall into selfishness and self-centeredness. Everything in our culture drives us that way. But help us to be different. Help us to be your lights to one another and to our community. God, help us to demonstrate to Jackson and Spring Arbor Michigan Center and, and every other place in between around here just what thankfulness looks like. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us and giving us your word. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Loved having you here with me this morning as we kicked off this sermon. I'm going to look at a sermon series, excuse me. Looking forward to seeing you back next week as we continue through this series, Our Incomparable God. And next week, we're going to be looking at the issue of greed, where greed leads. So have a wonderful day.